Hey everybody, guess what we're doing? We're making fast lye. That's lye, you're gonna use it within an hour or so of making it. It's quick because we're using a special ingredient. It's a very super special ingredient that you can purchase at any gas station and find in most refrigerators. It's not red, white, and blue too. What is it that newspaper does all the time? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let me talk to you about the components. We need some gloves. I really like those big, long yellow ones, but all of ours have got wore out, and I've just been silly, and I hadn't picked up any more, and that's bad. It's very, very bad, because I really like the ones that protect your arms up, because the, you know, those kitchen gloves that come up a little higher, protects you a little bit more from the light. Uh, we need some distilled water. We need our drink pitcher. Now, why are we using our drink pitcher? Because the light water is gonna be down here, and we can take our whisk. And we can be really rough with it, and it's hard for it to get out of here. This thing, you know, because all the water's down here at the bottom. And so you can whisk it and not end up splashing it on yourself, which is a lot safer. All right. We need a Central Depot lye because it's absolutely the best. So you don't really want to go anywhere else. It's food grade, so that means that they cannot run it on machines that's just run poison or some kind of chemical. They can't not clean that machine and then just run the lye through there and then sell it for 100% pure lye for Drano, you know, to put, put in drains because it's not meant for putting on, you know, utilizing in a cosmetic way. Where food grade, they have to clean those machines. They have to be food grade worthy so that means spotlessly cleaned no chemicals or or poisons or whatever can be run through those bottling machines prior to the lye so and and not cleaned out thoroughly so uh, this is the kind you want to get right here from Essential Depot food grade so you know the quality of what's in your bottle and also the machines that it was run on all right so there's no residue of strychnine <laughs> okay uh, we also need ice I got that right here. Oh, I don't even know if y'all can see. I'm getting it up here. We've got this big old vat of ice, but I'm making a lot of it, so I gotta have a lot. We need our whisk. I like a multi-pronged whisk because it does a better job, and we got a plate to put it on, so when we carry it to the sink or we're sitting it around, we don't drop lie on the floor, and then the kitty cat get her lie, uh, lie paws and, and, and blisters, and, and no ch small children shall hit lye water on the floor. We need a clean tray that's dry and a small um, um, measuring spoon, real tiny. All right. And we need a container to measure our lye in, something that the opening is smaller than the opening of our pitcher so that when we put it in there, we can go and we can shake it all out and we want it to be very dry very dry you couldn't have washed this today and air dried it it's got to be dry as a bone already in your kitchen cabinets because a lot of sticks to stuff all right and we need our goggles to protect our eyes why do we need goggles to protect our eyes because if you get live water in your eyes you have to go to the emergency room and you have to convince those people to please hurry before the light eats your cornea because you can get, it, it eats your cornea and you can go blind if you get lye in there. You know, if you get lye on your arms, you know, just flush it with water and put some vinegar on it, you're good. But you get it in your eyes, you gotta go to the hospital to get it neutralized. And, uh, and so, and, and you also gotta convince them to let you go back and do it because you look like you're perfectly fine. So they wanna put you on the waiting list and the nurses don't understand your cornea is being ate. So you gotta wear them goggles. And uh, look at these fancy goggles she got. She said, these here, I know, <laughs> these here, she said, these these really do the job. These really cover the They're whole like eyeball. Very suctioned. Yeah, there you go. She said, you feel safer, right? Yes. There you go. Once you feel safe about your eyes, you got some gloves, you know. What the heck? You're good now, right? Don't drink it. Just don't drink it. <laughs> We're just making soap. We're not going to drink it. <laughs> All right, no eating it either. Okay. All right. So, and we got our trusty vinegar and our sink right over there. And uh, how you know that you do this is, is uh, it'll get a little splash, just a little tiny splash. And you'll find yourself doing this. Then you'll find yourself rubbing. So when you first, you gotta be like on radar. <laughs> you know? 
and that first little tangle you get, just go flush it with some water and put some vinegar on it. You'll never get a blister. But if you leave it and you just keep scratching or clawing or rubbing at it, eventually your skin will get all raw and irritated. So then, then you'll have to deal with a, a what we call a live burn. But as long as, and as long as you just immediately, as soon as you get some on, you flush it off, you're good. And then after you're done, just go ahead and flush your arms and run some vinegar on you if you'd make you feel better. Uh, I do this every week, so it's nothing for me, you know. I don't even get burned anymore. One time Bridget dropped some crystals on her feet, on her shoes, and she was sweating. And she didn't watch that she got the crystals on her shoes. And I'll show you how to prevent that. And, uh, and she, her feet was sweating, and, and the moisture come up and grabbed those light crystals and pulled it down into her shoes. But you know how when your feet's all packed up in a tennis shoe, sometimes you'll have something wrong with your foot and you won't feel it till you pull it out of the shoe? Mm -hmm. So she didn't feel it till she put it out of the shoe. So she had to soak in vinegar water uh, for a while uh, when she got home, but then she was fine. But she had a little bit of a lie burn. So we're gonna show you how to prevent getting these crystals on the floor and letting them fall on your feet and your shoes, okay? All right, all right, so. But we're also gonna show you how to make fast lie. I know, everybody's going, shut up, Kimberly. Just show us how to do it. All right, but you know, we got people who's never done this lie before is gonna watch this. So we gotta make sure everybody knows what they're, what they're not supposed to do and what they're supposed to do. All right, so our recipe calls from how much water? 26.6. Uh, 26.6. .6. All right, so we've got my little trusty calculator here. And I got 26.6, well, if it would be working. 20. Well, if it would like, have, well, I guess we're gonna use our phone because the computer, the, because this is dot, it just says zero. It did that once before. I think we turned it upside down where it couldn't see the sun until the battery died. And then when it reset, it was fine. 26.6. All right. Uh, divide, take that and divide that by two and half, you know. Ten point six four. I don't think that's half of twenty six point six. You sure can. <laughs> I saw you put a 2.5 in there. That's how you do two and one half. I don't need two and one half. I just need I just need it half and half. It's hard because my glove is keeping my finger on it. 13 point 13.3. Now we go and now we're cooking. 13.3. So half. So our recipe calls for 26.6. So 13.3 is half of the water, okay? But you know, it's hard to do 0 0.3 with ice. So what we're gonna do is 13.6 in water, and then we'll do 13 in ice, okay? And that way we get our 26.6. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use our distilled water. Then we use distilled water because uh, mineral waters and chlorine in the city water, chemicals and things of that sort can be transferred over into your soap. Um, you drink it, but do you want to take a bath in it? It's up to you. Um, but when it comes to like spring water and mineral water and all those kind of things, you could have something in there that would relax, react with your lye too. So uh, if you get distilled water, that's just water that has, has had everything filtered out of it, and that way you won't have any reactions out of your lye with some chemical that you didn't even know was in there. All right, so how much water are we doing? 13.3. 13.3, oh, tear it out, hit the tear button. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna pull this down here, make sure you can see it pretty good. So we did, we teared it, we got zero, and now we're gonna do 13.6, right? Yes. All right, because we added the point three. Yeah. To make up for the 13 and nine. Yeah, that's right. All right, so now we're gonna talk about this, talk about this lie. The reason we got this little tray here and we got our little spoon, remember that? Okay, 
is because sometimes you accidentally overfill your lock. So we're going to tear it and we're going to put how much line here? What's our recipe called for? <clears throat> Go 11. 11 ounces. 11 ounces of, yep, that's it. 11 ounces. All right, so we're going to put 11 ounces in here. And when we get close to 11, what I do is I start just shifting a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. But where you end up with problems is people get too much in their cup and they try to pour it back. And then it goes flying everywhere like on Bridget Shoes that day. But if you just take your little scooper, you can put it inside and see you don't end up spilling lime because this stuff has static cling from hell. That's all I know how to explain it. And so now you can just take out what you've overdone and put it in here without the static cling sending that lye and then put it back in your dry plate. Once that gets wet, it's of no use to you. Yeah, I still overdid it. Okay, so now we got 11 ounces, and I forgot to tell you, I did it already. On your lie, when the lid's on firmly, always shake it because air has reactions with lie. And there's air in the top of the bottle, so the top part of your lye will be slightly reduced in power. So you want to shake it and blend that lye with the rest of it. And then keep your lid on as much as possible. As soon as you're done, pop that lid back on there. All right? So now, we're going to take our 11 ounces of lye and put it in that, how many ounces of water? 13.6. I got it wrote down. That's how I'm keeping up with stuff. She can't see it, so I'm sneaky. But I always take notes. All right, so we're dumping that in there. Taking a firm hold of our pitcher. We're stepping back to make sure that we do not, we do not bring in the fumes. And look at this. See how you can do this? You can be pretty rough but it just can't spray, uh, splash up on you. It, it's just too hard. That's why I like these. And don't get the little flimsy one. Make sure you got some thick plastic. You know, get the Walmart brand. And I accidentally got a little bit of lye crystals uh, stuck to the side of my thing. And when it did, that means they won't get dissolved. So, That's a dangerous proposal, but if you like crystals get stuck to the side of your pot, you got to get them off. You can't leave them on there. They won't dissolve in oil. They only dissolve in water. All right, so I don't have any lye crystals on the side stuck, and when I put my hands up, I don't see any lye crystals not dissolved in the bottom. So I'm going to put my whisk. Are you listening so you're learning Ruby? Yes. All right. <coughs> so I'm putting my whisk on that tray so I don't drop lye water on the floor mm -hmm. or on the counter and then get it on my arms. All right. So now that we've done this, now we're going to put this on the scale and get tired. And uh, well actually, it would be safer guys if we took our 13 ounces and did it in this mm -hmm. and then poured it into here and that way we wouldn't worry about this flipping over on the scale. So we'll put this on here. We'll set our lye water over here safely out of the way. Push back. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, did you have it zeroed? Yeah. All right. She zeroed her container. Now she's putting, uh, we're going to put 13, yeah, 13 ounces of ice. All right. Just a little bit more. Now we got 14.25, 13.4, 13.3, 13 13.5, 0.05. We can live with that. All right, and now we're going to just put that in there and watch it disappear.
And that hot, angry life, it melted that ice in a flash. But that cooled it down by half, okay? And so now, I'm gonna put it in my freezer for about 10 or 15 minutes, maybe 20. I'm gonna check it, and once it's room temperature to cold, I'm gonna bring it out. But now remember, you gotta make sure your little kids and nobody gets messing around your freezer when you're doing this. Uh, if you're doing this at home, you might even wanna take something and put it all the way around your freezer and have a locking me mechanism, so that, you know, like a strap, like you use on a utility trailer when you're strapping down your, your boxes and your furniture when you're moving. Get a small one, even a bungee cord, put it around your freezer so this don't open up easy. And then when somebody sees that, they're gonna read the sign that says, don't open, dangerous lie inside. And also that'll keep your little kids from just opening it. All right, so hang on, I'm gonna show you this. So, see, there's my freezer. I've got my lie right here. I'm not putting a lid on it because I'm just gonna leave it for a short period of time. And then I'm going to, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna use it immediately today in about an hour. But if I was gonna keep this for long term, then I'd put a lid on it because what does air do? Air causes your lie to get weaker. And that's why you'll see that white ash floating around on the top of your lie water. That's because your lie water had uh, contact with air and it diminished your lie. All right, but we're here at the store and so we can't mess up. All right, so Ruby, yeah, tell me what, tell me how you do it. All right, so first you have to get all your containers and then uh, you fill them with water and then. And how much water do you use? Use. 13.3. Uh, and it was because it was tw it was 26.6. .6. Originally. Uh -huh, and we hacked it in half, right? And we had to add the ice. Uh-huh. And, and that gives us the 13 ounces for the ice. And we had .6, mm -hmm. but we throw that up in the water. And what, did you see how hard it was to get an exact amount yes. of big chunks of ice? So we don't want to mess with that .6 with the ice. We want a solid number, like 13. <clears throat> you need goggles and gloves. Uh-huh. Um, Protective your, uh, uh, thing here is pretty good too for you. Yeah, clothes. yeah. Um, your lye, and then a separate container. You need your spatula and your plate. Uh, whisk, whisk. Mm -hmm. You're as good as me. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> hey, she messes up better than I. Do. <laughs> uh, a plate and a spoon. It has to be dry or mm -hmm. messed up, uh, and it has to be small enough you can poke it back in the lye ball. Yes. Um, then you, once you pour your lye, your measured out lye, into your thing of water, you take your whisk mm -hmm. and you start stirring it and then, um, you then add your ice and then you start stirring it again and then you put it in your freezer mm -hmm. or your fridge. Mm -hmm. And what's the most important thing to check before you put the ice in there? Make sure all your crystals are, are all dissolved. dissolved. Yeah. Did you know that lye crystals does not like to dissolve in cold water? No, mm -mm. I did not know that. It don't. It likes room temperature water. What happens if you put hot water? Now just think about this, guys. What happens when you put your lye into the water? They all dissolve really quick. Yeah, but it gets hot, do not it? Mm -hmm. So just think about what would happen if you put boiling water, uh, or really, really hot water, or just hot water from the tap into the lye. You would have to cool it for a long time. No, no, to, no, no. Mm -hmm. To get it room temperature. Yeah, but think yeah. about what what happens when, when water gets hot. It boils. It, it boils. Did yeah. you know that you can boil water in your container? It'll literally spew yeah. out of your container because like a volcano. Lye. Because you put lye, which has a chemical reaction with water that causes heat, and you put it in lye, in lye crystals in it, and it'll start boiling. Mm -hmm. and, and you know how water boils, and it goes, you know. Well, that's what happens in your pot, and all of a sudden, stuff will just start flying out of your pot, and lye water can go everywhere. Yeah. Never use hot water, because some of you just make soap for yourself, and you use your tap water. You make sure, you make sure that you use cold water out of your tap, okay? We use the distilled water, we're gonna sell our soap. If for some reason you want to use your well water, you've you tested it, everything's fine, it don't give you troubles with reactions, or you use um, 
uh, tap water, make sure you add that to your label. If you use just plain old distilled water out of a bottle, then you don't have to add that to your label. But if you're doing something distinctive, you need to let people know. Uh, because let's say um, somebody has filters on their whole house to keep chlorine out of their hair color. Because mm -hmm. they think that the hair color messes with their, yeah. the, the chlorine messes with their hair color. Mm -hmm. And then you sell them a bar of soap with chlorine in it from your sink. Yeah. So then they, they might get upset with you, okay? Not to say that the chlorine lives through the bleach, the, the lye process. The lye probably eats the chlorine. I, I don't know. I'm not a chemist. 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 There you go. See? I got to have her around here. But anyway, but... So if you just stick it on your label, whatever kind of water you're going to use, if you don't use distilled water or bottled water from the store, then that way people can make a firm decision. Two, you might find that people like the idea you use rainwater. Uh, if you're selling to, to yeah, preppers. that would be cool. Yeah, if you're selling to preppers or people that like to go real natural and stuff, they might love the fact that you're using rainwater. Or well water. Or well water, or yeah. Or like stream water uh, yeah or, sure. or stream water so you know so you just uh, you just uh, add things like that to your label you can either use it as an enhancement it makes it unique yeah and a uniqueness or you can just poke it on there and be done with it all right so and then what do you do you put your 13.3 ounces of water in here mm -hmm. right and you set it down and then you get your lye in here we ought to put that over with ice so we don't mess up and get, forget what we use for that. All right, so then you put your 11 ounces of lye in here, and then dump it in there and stir it up. Yes. And then after you've got it, all the lye crystals dissolved, then we add our ice, and then we poke it in the freezer. But we do stir it. Stir it really good. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Hey, Ruby, you want to say hi? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ruby, you want to say bye? Bye, Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. We've enjoyed having you around. Now, remember, guys, if you want to see my other videos, you got to go to that other platform. That's where you go to see those videos that YouTube won't let us put on here. All right. Bye, everybody. And it's not bad videos.